Well, hi everybody. Uh, today's topic is uh, all about uh, your equipment or tools that you might need to uh, get involved with uh, being a beekeeper. Well, we've obviously got to start with uh, yourself, and uh, the first thing you need to acquire is uh, a bee suit. Uh, or a smock, whatever you like to call it. Uh, I personally use um, a jacket type with uh, an attached veil to it. It's got um, Velcro and zipper fastening on it uh, and it makes sure that I'm suitably protected uh, against uh, bees uh, getting to me. The next thing that you'll need. Again, it all depends on the individual. But uh, when you start up, but the next thing you'll need will be um, your gloves. Now you'll see a lot of proprietary gloves on the market, which are leather. I personally wouldn't recommend them. And in all honesty, uh, it would be nice to actually feel that I could go in, or you could go into your hive without gloves. Yes, and people do that. But I generally use um, a, a latex rubber pair and uh, other proprietaries that are on the market are the thinner medical type of glove. And again, it'll be really down to your preference as you get more confident with handling the bees. I have actually used those type of gloves, but again, I, I don't know, there's something about being hit by bees in the fingers. Time will um, give you the experience and um, the understanding of whether or not you really want to go down that route. Next, um, I've actually started to wear uh, one of these uh, bands on my head. Uh, to stop perspiration, yeah, I, I perspire heavily, especially uh, in these warm, warmer days in, in a full smock. And um, I've also got some uh, wristbands as well that uh, tend to help. Um, and on a personal uh, point, uh, I, I actually take um, these antihistamine tablets. Um, non-drowsing type. Uh, again, it all depends on uh, how you feel about uh, your own situation health-wise. Have you been stung before? Have you had an allergic reaction? But um, it's always better to be safe and sorry, isn't it? So that's on the personal side. Oh, and not forgetting, a nice stout pair of wellies, uh, making sure that uh, your trousers or your smock suit, your full smock suit, are, are tucked in suitably. Right, the um, really the basic tools that you'll need as a beekeeper will be to start with your smoker. Sorry for the noise there and these come in different sizes and types etc. Um, my smoker here I've made a bung to put into obviously the, the hole there and then it stops the, um, the fuel from burning when you finish with the smoker. And then in, obviously inside of the smoker what you do is put your smoker fuel and in my particular instance here, I make up my own cartridges. These are basically cardboard um, with a uh, hessian sack cut down and wrapped up accordingly. That tends to give us a nice cool um, smoke, long lasting. I can generally do about two or three hives with that, full inspections. But again, you'll get more familiar with what you're comfortable with. Most people's problems is uh, the starting up or the lighting of the smoker and to um, make sure that it continues to burn.
along with the, um, the smoker you will need to obviously light your fuel and what I've done is purchased a, a proprietary product with uh, a gas product with a self-igniting uh, mechanism uh, quick release etc easy to start up light the fuel close it down insert the fuel into the smoker you can generally do that within 15 seconds or so, so that's uh, nice and handy to have that I forgot to say with the rubber gloves um, I generally will wash mine out uh, when I've done a hive inspection uh, generally after each hive inspection I will put them into soda water to give them a good clean once they're dried etc I can reuse them and I put then talcum powder inside that will help your hands slide in just a, a subtle uh, tip there we then come on to the hive tools and again there are numerous types what I've got here is um, a J tool which has got a flat and a curved end uh, you'll understand more about that when um, I show videos about uh, moving through the hive uh, and then we've got a um, ordinary flat tool there again with a hooked end to it but again numerous types on the market uh, I advise you to get a stainless steel type these are stainless steel albeit they don't look it but they are uh, um, and good wear resistance there yes you'll need um, a couple of these per hive these are what they call porter bee escapes and what they, um, they are is a plastic construction they sometimes have um, plastic inserts or metal inserts in there but basically it facilitates the movement of the bees through this unit to help them move around in the hive but again I'll show you more videos of that as and when we go through a hive inspection We generally try and mark our queen bees and uh, like anything in society you try to keep things uniform but um, what we've got here is, is different colour marker pens available and um, there's a different colour per year of what the actually activities of the queen is developed. Um, if she's born this year for instance, this is shot in 2015 the marker colour for her this year would be blue but in all honesty I generally just work with a white marker pen and um, uh, again you'll get used and understand to the process of how you work with your bees and the method of approach you want to adopt to mark your queens you generally got to trap her and this is um, a mechanism Called a queen trap. This, uh, as you can see, is a a pronged effort. That you basically find the queen on the uh, the comb, and then you push that into the comb slightly, trapping her into situation, and then with the marker pen, just dab her on her back with the appropriate colour, and then put that away and she'll be released again to do her work so that's a useful uh, item to have and then we come on to um, having uh, either a pair of scissors or a nice sharp knife it's always uh, nice to have around I also carry um, a container of water, um, both a, con uh, a plain container, which I can refill the spray, which um, a lot of people 
use actually to inspect the hive in replacement as an alternative to the smoker. I've used it on occasions, yes it does work, and again, it's up to you and what you find is most comfortable in using. So much here. General little box of knickknacks, and again, as we move through these items, these are items that I've now acquired over the, the many years that I've been beekeeping and I generally got to hand. So a box there of um, drawing pins, uh, rubber bands, a pair of scissors, a few paper clips. I know it sounds crazy but you will have a use for those in the, in the coming years. We have also Sorry, I talked with uh, my back to you. We've also got um, a couple of different queen cages here. These can be used for transportation of the queen. Um, so different configurations. It's not a necessity to have them, but again, you'll find as the years go on, always useful to have around. What else have we got? Yes, a bucket, and uh, in which I've got a, um, a metal uh, plate in there, a metal dish, and uh, that's obviously nice to use when you come back with your hot smoker. I drop it into there on the base of the metal dish, and subsequently don't have a, a large hole develop in my uh, my bucket. And I've also got a, a couple of um, uh, metal trays that I tend to use um, when I'm taking off old comb from the hive. Just drop it in there so that I can take it home and um, subsequently um, undertake the, uh, the melting of the wax. And that'll be another topic. One of the other initial products that you will need is what they call a mouse guard. This is a perforated strip, generally metal, and uh, this goes on the front of your hive in the winter period to stop the, um, the mice getting in there and uh, doing damage. So that's quite important to have right up front. And then in my little box here, I've got pieces of foam. I'm not actually going to tell you what their uses are, but it's always nice to have them around and as you see, I'll show you bits of film with uh, these being used over a period of time. Plastic bags. Newspaper. Pieces of cardboard. I've got a, a nice brush there that's used for basically stroking the bees off of a comb but in all honesty I haven't used that more than a handful of times in uh, my many years of being a beekeeper but it um, might be handy to have and then as we move through the bits here it's always nice to have a few of these straps uh, around you to facilitate the clamping up of a hive should you have to move it on some occasions. And as you can see here, what I've got on this occasion is what they call a nuke box, which is basically a small hive. It facilitates five frames in there, but on this occasion, um, I've used it to bring this nuke box to my apiary today. A nuke box could be a possibility. I'm going to classify it as equipment and um, could be a possibility to purchase in your first year or so of being a beekeeper. It's always handy to have more than one hive around you for developing other colonies. Um, 
I've got a nice deep plastic box here that I sit into the back of my vehicle and that's uh, to facilitate the well as you see all my equipment and should anything drip water honey it goes into the uh, the plastic tray rather than on the boot of your car and um, I think last but by no means least is um, a trolley. Um, this is uh, quite a versatile item. It can be uh, used to uh, take your bits and pieces to and from your, your apiary. Nice uh, heavy supers full of honey. Anyway, I think that's it for today. I've gone over the basics. So um, go out and start buying. Uh, it's not a cheap hobby, but uh, it's always best to have the, um, the tools around you. It's a worthwhile investment. But I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.